What's up everybody? It's Garrett with 3.5 Customs here today. We're here talking about a couple of the Broncos that we finished up about mid last year, 2020. Um, really excited to show everybody what we've done on these. Uh, two similar yet unique builds all on their own. We'll do a quick walk around on each one. Uh, we'll show some of the highlights of everything that we added to each one to, to make them truly stand out among other Broncos in their class. This Bronco originally came to us and it was just supposed to be a simple wiring tuck, uh, clean up, we were going to do a serpentine system on it, an EFI conversion on the, the 302 that was in there. Uh, upon disassembly, we found that the 302 had more problems than we had originally anticipated. And then as we got into the project, we found rust all throughout the entire Bronco. Um, this Bronco, unfortunately, is probably one of the worst cases we've seen as far as rust repairs. To give an example, the only original sheet metal, the hood, the grill, the quarter panels, and the top. Everything else has been replaced. We did inner fender wells, we did most of the firewall from about uh, the brake line down, all the flooring all the way through the back. Um, at that point we decided it was going to be best to go ahead and just do a complete frame off on this Bronco. And as you can see, uh, we opted to go with a, a Coyote engine. This is a 2014 Mustang pullout motor. It was a very low mileage engine when we got it. We called Ford Racing and ordered a control pack for this engine so we can run standalone. We backed that up with a NV3550 transmission. And behind that is still the factory uh, Model 20 transfer case. Um, Ford 9 inch rear, Dana 44 front, disc brake conversion in the front, a uh, little heavier duty, and then still drum brake in the rear. Ron Davis radiator to help cooling with this, and then Sean at AED did all the tuning. This was a big challenge in, in fitment. Uh, I, I've, first off, it was the first, this was really kind of my introduction to Broncos um, as far as complete restorations go. So being that this is a 74 Bronco, obviously the engine bay is very tight. Uh, that poses a lot of fitment issues trying to squeeze such a large engine into uh, obviously a very small space. Um, these inner fender wells, these were trimmed back as far as we could get. Um, we did a BC Broncos front accessory drive kit on this engine which allowed us a little more space between the radiator and the front of the motor, but everything's still really packed and really tight. Another unique feature that I really like, we use the Hydrotech Hydro Assist power brake unit, very tight, small unit. Uh, we did all our own custom plumbing on this one. We basically bought their kit and threw all the plumbing in the trash and then started from square one. Racetronics, a great company out of Canada, uh, we used one of their reservoirs for the power steering and hydro assist unit. Works really well, plumbed up really nice. I was able to tuck the lines very tight to the engine. And then under this panel, we put all of our electrical. So very easy to service. You don't have to get under the dash to try and change any of your fuses um, or relays. It's all right here, easily accessible, and it's all weather sealed um, to the top of the cowl. We used a hydraulic slave cylinder. We custom fabricated all the bracketry on the side of the transmission uh, and then um, a Willwood three-quarter inch master cylinder to drive all that. Real simple setup, works really nice, very uh, linear fluid clutch engagement, very soft to the, the foot. Uh, really happy with that setup. As we go around aesthetically, this was actually a Bronco Sport when we got it as you can see, has the original white stripe down the side of the Bronco. Um, we added our little flair, uh, the customer, he, the name of his 
property is 104 Ranch. We contacted Billet Badges. They helped us out quite a bit. We went back and forth on designs multiple times and finally drummed up uh, what we thought would look best on the Bronco. It wouldn't be a loud uh, representation of his personality. Just a nice marriage of his taste and our style uh, to bring this Bronco together just as a final piece. The wheels, one of my favorite uh, unique features. Um, we had these custom cut by Wheelsmith uh, down in Southern California. It took a little bit of doing uh, and just a little bit of back and forth with them, but we were able to come up with a wheel and tire package that gave the Bronco its original look and feel uh, and didn't detract from the originality of this year. When we approached them about doing it, they walked us through the whole process. They were really easy to work with. And one of my favorite things about it was we got to choose the color code on the inside of the wheel. We were able to choose the actual rim finish and then on the same build sheet, put in all of our specs to ensure that even on full stuff with a 32 and a half inch tall tire, we don't have any rubbage. So on this Bronco, we opted for Wild Horses suspension. Um, Jim down there, he's been doing this a long time and, and when it comes to a, a factory frame Bronco, uh, as far as ride quality goes, I don't think anything else matches it. Uh, they did a, a very good job of getting the right spring rates for these Broncos and making something that not only is easy to install, but is also very roadworthy. It, it rides smooth, it's, it's firm, but it's not, uh, it's not jarring. And all in all, just a really great product. The only thing we added, um, our special little touch is we had King uh, Shocks actually build us a custom set of um, monotube shocks for this. They, they work really well, they dampen extremely well, and I couldn't be happier with how they went in. I didn't need to make any weird spacers, nothing goofy, they bolted right up, everything worked and jived the way we wanted it to, so very happy with that. So we'll move on to the interior. Uh, Danny at DJ Designs down in Hayward, we kind of gave him free reign and he knocked it out of the park. The carpet is, if I remember right, a, Mer a factory Mercedes carpet. We opted for a very soft suede headliner um, and then just stayed very traditional black, something that wouldn't feel like it shouldn't be in a Bronco, uh, but also has a lot of class to it. So a nice low back seat that still folds forward, easy access to the rear, um, and then Danny kind of did his own thing from there. Uh, very nice, tight-fitting door panels, did his own custom dash pad. He actually covered the electric motor and windshield wiper assembly. There's, there's a big arm that goes underneath here. Danny was able to make, make most of that stuff hide and disappear, uh, considering how little space he had to work with. This one, again, we put, opted for power windows. We left the factory wing windows in, again, to try and keep everything feeling factory. They work really well. Uh, we've used these kits from New Relics on this build and the one we'll get to next and a bunch of our other projects and we have nothing but great things to say. Very smooth, easy installation, uses factory mounting hardware and goes right in like it was meant to be there. Obviously, we put air conditioning in custom pedal assemblies, and uh, the drive-by wire unit, we used a low car pedal so we could hopefully match the rest of the pedals in the, the Bronco. One thing we did do on this one, a little unique, we actually put our own roll bar in. It has three-point shoulder harnesses like a modern car. Very comfortable, uh, it gets away from some of the things we found on the other Bronco was we were getting door dings from letting the seat belt go back in its and retract back into its its location. 
uh, by going to the shoulder harness, we've reduced a lot of that and also increased a lot of the comfort getting in and out of the car and also driving down the road. Um, real happy with how that came out. Fits really tight. It's actually a three-piece roll bar with chromoly knuckles in between each joint. So the knuckle itself, the joint, is stronger than the physical cage. So we feel real confident that it is not only aesthetically pleasing, it's also safe. So we wanted to give the openings more of a factory feel uh, and really a streamlined product that, that people wouldn't even notice was there, was kind of the approach I was taking to these carpet trims. Hammer Fab, great company, helped us out. They supply the tooling that we use to do the indentations around the screws. So just give it another clean, simple look that doesn't take away and doesn't look out of place on you know a classic Bronco. As you can see, we added amp steps to this Bronco. It's a great addition for anybody who likes to get in and out and doesn't have, want to hop or for that matter, tear up the edge of their seat every time they get in and out. Uh, they move up cleanly. They're completely concealed underneath the Bronco when everything's installed. Uh, that's actually a part we make in-house as well as the adapters to actually bolt those to your factory rocker panel on the Bronco. They tie the rocker panel to the floor structure, creating a triangulation point that supports the entire rocker and <clears throat> step assembly so you don't have to worry about deflection or cracking paint around any of your openings. Uh, at the back of the Bronco, we try to keep the spare tire in the original location. The wheel offset, obviously not being factory, uh, did require a little bit of uh, fabrication to make some brackets to actually support and hold this wheel and still actually put the factory hub cap back on. Um, it still swings out just like the original. And then we can actually open up on this one for the back hatch, we opted to use a uh, hydraulic strut assembly rather than the factory hatch supports. In doing so, we got rid of a lot of interior noise as you're driving down the road when this hatch is closed. Uh, obviously very sleek, streamlined, and they help as well when you actually close, they actually snap the hatch close. Really nice feature. And again, just smooth, makes it feel a little more modern. Uh, factory tailgate hardware other than being all stainless and then at the back we added a couple touch lights so you can see where your car goes at. The rear seat is actually a tuck and fold assembly for a Jeep that we had cut and modified so we could use in a Bronco and again allow more floor space in case you need to add more cargo to the back of your Bronco. So something that's not off the shelf and, and more custom and built uh, specific for this Bronco. So one thing I'd like to touch on, on this project in particular was it took almost as much time to try and figure out how to make this engine run correctly as it did to get the physical motor in the Bronco. Uh, we chased a couple gremlins, um, mostly tuning wise, and it wasn't until we stepped up and got introduced to Sean over at AED Tuning that we really really made this project come to life. Uh, Sean was, was extremely patient and very diligent in what he did, and he spent an entire day on the dyno ensuring that this engine performed at not only its peak, but also in the areas that a lot of people miss. Down low, from stoplight to stoplight, coming to a stop, when the AC gets engaged, when the steering wheel turns, when the fan turns on, he touched and manipulated every aspect of that tune to optimize it for this specific build. And I can't thank him enough for doing that because we were truly at wit's end 
before that. We had a we had a goofy stalling issue. I was very frustrated. I was very happy with the overall Bronco. I just wasn't happy with how it drove. And Sean really made this drive like a brand new vehicle. And I really, I hope people understand what it really takes to make one of these run right in a Bronco. So another thing, uh, Sean was able to squeak out a fair amount of horsepower uh, considering the fact that uh, a Bronco you're limited in exhaust sizing. Um, we had a lot of issues getting anything bigger than about a two and a half inch exhaust run all the way out the frame and kept it tucked into the inside of the frame. So being that it only has a two and a half inch exhaust, uh, a, a very tight header package and an intake that really isn't optimized, we were still able to squeak out uh, a touch over 300 horsepower at the rear tire. Uh, it doesn't sound like much, but when you think about a vehicle that only weighs in at about 3,800 pounds, uh, it's quite the little rocket ship. Um, another thing that helps it is the gobs of torque he was able to pull out of it, made almost 390 foot-pounds at the tire. And when you think about parasitic loss in a four-wheel drive, it really adds up to quite a bit at the back of the crank. You know, we've got a transfer case to go through. We've got um, a CV joint at the front uh, <clears throat> of the drive shaft, a, a standard U-joint at the back, and then we're turning a 32 and a half inch tire. We're making almost 400 horsepower out of an engine that was pulled out of a car and put into something that wasn't designed for. Um, being the space limitations that we have, we're very proud of how much power and how well this thing drives with this combination. <laughs> <laughs>